Hey folks, welcome back for another episode of Code Club. In recent episodes, I have been trying to build out a package that I'm calling Phylotyper. Uh, this package will have the functionality that will allow us to classify DNA sequences coming from 16S rRNA genes uh, in bacteria. And so again, if that means absolutely nothing to you, if that is just gobbledygook and you're ready to move away from this video, please don't. Because I think along the way, even if you're not interested in bioinformatics, you will still learn a great deal about the process of building a package, a lot from the benchmarking that we do, and kind of my overall thought process in how I go about building out the functionality in this package. In today's episode, we are going to read in another file, a taxonomy file, that in our case has two columns. The first column is a listing of accession numbers for the sequences in our reference FASTA file. The second column is the taxonomic string that corresponds to those accession numbers. This way, we will ultimately be able to join together our FASTA sequence data with our taxonomy data for our reference and then feed that into our process of building our database. We have done all this already in a vignette file, but it's got functionality that I want to encapsulate inside of a function within our overall Phylotyper package. So we're gonna go ahead and head over to our studio now, looking in the files tab of our project and going down to the benchmarking directory, you'll see that I have a vignette.r script, very good. And this is kind of where we left things last episode where I did this benchmarking um, and I'm gonna go ahead and remove the benchmarking stuff because it's really not relevant at this point because we've kind of done what we need to do uh, and remove this comment and that timing. And so again, this allows us to read in our FASTA formatted data. And what I wanna to turn to for today is this next step of reading in the taxonomy data. So uh, to kind of show you how things currently work, I'm gonna go ahead and load all this stuff, including loading the package. And I'll load these two files that are also found in uh, this benchmarking directory and by the way, if you want to get the code that I have down below in the description for this show, uh, you will find links to what the GitHub repository for the package looks like at the beginning of the episode, as well as at the end of the episode. So we'll go ahead then and read in those FASTA sequences. You'll see that that's just takes a little pulse and it's pretty quick. And then again, what we want to think about today is generating this genera variable. And so if we look at this, the output is a tibble where we've got, again, the accession number or accession ID and the taxonomic string. This is the listing of the kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, and then off to the right is the genus. This data set from the RDP doesn't have species level information. The main reason for that is that you really can't do an adequate job of classifying bacteria to the species level using only the 16S rRNA gene. You wanna to get to the species level, you really are best served by getting full genome sequence data. Anyway, what we want to do in today's episode is encapsulate these two steps into our own function that we'll call read taxonomy. And one of the things I'm most interested in for today's episode is figuring out if this read TSV function that's really coming to us from the read R package is the fastest way that we have of doing this. Of course, we saw that when we ran this, it was really quick. And there's some things going on in here that are perhaps not optimal, right? So like we see when we run read R that it's going to go ahead and kind of guess the type of data in um, our accession and taxonomy data. We can tell it that specifically and we'll see if that speed things up. Maybe, maybe not, but there's other functions that we could use to go ahead and try to benchmark uh, the, the timing it takes to read in a tab separated values file, a TSV. Of course, as with all benchmarkings, it is highly context dependent. We've seen that in many past episodes. And so I encourage you, um, if you have a problem like reading in TSV data, to go ahead and kind of do similar types of benchmarking. Try a couple different functions from different packages and see how the performance varies across these different packages for your particular data. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and create a new R script. And I'm going to put in this uh, these two lines, nine through 11, all right? And I'm gonna start with the benchmarking. So I'll go ahead and take this taxonomy uh, definition, right? And we'll then go ahead and prove to ourselves that this works. Okay, 
And there's a few different approaches that we have at our disposal in R for reading in tab separated values data. Generally, if you can read in a TSV, there's another function for reading in a CSV or any other type of delimiter that you want. And so hopefully what I am doing here for TSVs will also work for CSVs. But again, it's all context dependent and um, that's something you're gonna have to figure out. So the first thing that I wanna show you is read.delim. So read.delim, as you can see here, comes from the utils package. I'll go ahead and open up the help. So read.delim, let's enlarge on this. And so again, this is data input. As I mentioned, it comes from the utils uh, package that is baked into R. And so you'll see there's a read table function. There's a read CSV, read CSV2, read delim, read delim2. And so basically these five different functions vary in how they set up a delimiter. So they call the delimiter here sep. So sep in read table is a pair of double quotes with nothing in it. If you look further down in the documentation, you'll find that that means separate on any white space, right? We don't want to do that because we may or may not have spaces in our taxonomy column. But what we do have is a tab to separate the accession ID from the taxonomy. So then again, read CSV, the separator is a comma, read CSV2, it's a semicolon, and then read delim, it's a tab. Read delim2, um, not really sure what the difference is here, <laughs> um, but uh, I'm not gonna worry too much about it, um, except, oh, well, I guess read delim2, I notice here, um, has a comma for a decimal rather than a decimal in numeric things. So we're gonna focus on read.delim. And one other thing to notice um, is that in these read functions that are baked into base R, there's a really important um, thing, and that is this argument strings as factors. And so strings as factors uh, is something that was a problem uh, a few years back in these functions, where strings as factors down here was set as true. And so basically any string, and what we have here are strings or character data, would be treated as a factor or a, an ordinal data type. And so one of the benefits of say read underscore TSV was that it had string as, as factors equals false. <laughs> and so now of course, the default for read table, read delim is strings as factors equals false. So that's really not such a big difference between read delim and read underscore TSV. So let's go ahead and play with this. So we'll do read delim on taxonomy. We see the output is a data frame. And so we get just tons of data coming out. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pipe this to the head function. And so this will give us the first six rows of our data frame. And so you'll see that we get one column um, of accession IDs. And one thing you'll notice is that it has a column name, and this is actually the first accession in the data frame. And so that's not good, because uh, the second column then has the taxonomy for that first sequence as the column name. And so we'll want to go ahead and modify this a bit. And you can kind of see something like that up here, where I set call names here on line four for read underscore TSV. So it's a slightly different syntax in read table read delim, it's call dot names. And so we'll go ahead and do call dot names. Uh, and I'll set that equal to this, I'll go ahead and do some uh, copy and pasting, hope you don't mind. All right, so now we look back, and we see that the column name for the uh, first column is accession, and it's taxonomy for the second. One thing I noticed, though, is that the first sequence starts with an EF. And the column name that we had before, so was AJ, and the EF was the first row or basically the second row. And so what that's telling me is that it's it's using um, that AJ as the header, but we need to tell it that it doesn't actually have a header. So we'll do header equals false and let's, oh, I forgot a comma, all right. And so now let's see if we've got AJ in that first column and sure enough, we've got that there. And so that will all match. It's a good thing we've got that because if we have different numbers of rows in our taxonomy data from our FASTA data, then things will go all sorts of craziness <laughs> when we try to join those together. So one other thing that I want to add to this then are the classes or the types of data in both of those columns. So with that, we can do call classes. And again, we can then give it a vector of types. And so I'll say character uh, for both of these. So if you scroll down in the help to the call classes argument, 
you'll notice that the default is character type. Um, and so that you can put in whatever type you want. Um, and so the different options would be logical, integer, numeric, complex, character, or raw, or factor, or date, or whatever, right? So um, in general, you might just let it figure things out for you. But um, because I want that tighter control, um, I'm going to go ahead and define the types of data in those two classes. And so again, we run that and we see not much has changed. Cool. So this is our first approach for reading in the data. So I'm going to go ahead then and do micro benchmark, um, micro benchmark. And let's go ahead and tab that over and I'll go ahead and call this r.d. And, and then we'll go ahead and uh, close out the function. I'll remove this head statement. So by default, micro benchmark will do 100 reps or evaluations of this line. And what we find is that the median was 28 milliseconds to run that line. Very fast. Um, I'm not going to be worried too much about this warning message. Um, I think this sometimes happens when things go too fast um, and it's kind of freaking out a little bit. All right. So let's read delimiter. So let's try another approach. And so what I want to go back to is our read r uh, function here, right? And so we know this works already. So I'll go ahead and grab this and we'll go ahead and call this r underscore t on that. Um, and I'm noticing um, some differences here in kind of the general syntax. So before I run this, I would like to rerun this function and see what it's giving me for output, right? So I see that it does give me that aj as the, the first accession number, right? So one thing we might do is like, let's take this uh, and pipe it to dim to get the dimension. So we find it has 24,642 rows. And we find that this also has 24,642 rows. So we're getting the same data. One of the other things that I notice when I run this is that it is telling us the column specification that read underscore TSV is guessing this for us. Generally, it does that A-OK, -okay, it's not a problem, right? And so what I will do is I'm going to go ahead and tell it the type of data I have because this might speed things up a little bit so that it doesn't have to kind of guess or spend time guessing uh, on the type of data in these two columns. And so we'll do call underscore types, and then we'll do calls. And so what I like to do is to name the specific columns and then set that equal to the type of data, right? So we could do like accession equals call underscore character, right? And then we could do like taxonomy equals call underscore character, right? And so then this will work. Let's go ahead and run that and prove to ourselves that works. Good. And so you'll notice that that output of the column specification no longer shows up. So this is generally how I would do it if I had a bunch of columns and different types of data in each of the columns. There's different call underscore functions like call numeric, call date, call character, call logical, right? But everything I have in these two columns is call character. So what works really nicely when you have a lot of data and most of the columns are the same type is to use the default argument. And so this says, by default, apply this type to all the columns. So we'll do call underscore character and go ahead and let's see what happens when we run this. And that works great. Again, no problems. So I'm going to go ahead and benchmark this and see how long it takes to run. And bam, <laughs> we find that read underscore table is about 50% faster than read dot delim, right? So we're talking 15 milliseconds versus 30 milliseconds. Again, no one's going to notice that. Um, we are working with the full data set, so that's not such a concern um, that it's taking as long as it's taking. Uh, I'm not really concerned about 15 milliseconds, but at the same time, you never know. We might get into some really big uh, data files. These have, like I said, 24,000, 25,000 rows. We might get something that's got 300,000 rows, right? And then I guess it would take, well, 300 milliseconds. That's still less than a second, still fast. Anyway, let's see uh, what else we can do to kind of speed things up. Another approach that I've talked about in recent episodes um, is Vroom. And so we'll go ahead and do uh, Vroom, colon, colon, Vroom, right? And then we'll give that taxonomy. And so let's go ahead and look at the help for the Vroom function. And so this will read a delimited file into a tibble. We talked about this in the last episode using Vroom lines. And so this read our data in really fast. But what we learned is that it didn't actually read in the data. It read in kind of pointers to the data, 
Um, and it didn't really instantiate the data in memory, if that makes sense. Anyway, go back and look at the last episode if you want to learn more about that. But there's also a room function that um, will read in a delimited file. And that syntax is very similar to read underscore TSV. And I think the developers of read R and Vroom are actually working very closely with each other to try to get the, the best performance out of both packages in each of the packages. So we say that we've got the call names and the call types arguments in here. So I'm really gonna go ahead and copy this stuff down. Um, and I'm, as I'm doing this, I'm thinking I probably also wanna add in the delim um, because I think by default, it will guess the delim uh, one or more characters used to delimit the blah, if null is the limiter is guessed from this set, right? So I don't like to have things guess for me. So we'll do delim equals uh, backslash T to match a tab. And so let's go ahead and run this to make sure it works as expected. And up, oh, we're missing a comma at the end of this line, of course. And so that runs, um, and again, we get the expected output. So let's go ahead and read this in as uh, V, and we'll go ahead and run everything to see how long it takes to run now this additional function. So wow, <laughs> it's really fast. Um, I'm impressed by that. Um, something I am worried about is again, whether or not it's reading it in as a tibble or as pointers to data like it was doing before with room lines. One of the things we did with room lines to make sure that the data was getting instantiated into the memory was to add a function um, in a pipeline after reading in the data. And so maybe what I'll do is go ahead and add this mutate line. Um, and this mutate is coming to us from dplyr. So let's go ahead and take this, and I'm gonna add that to um, my r.d for read delim. And we'll also add that to um, read underscore TSV, and then also to vroom. So let's go ahead and run it now and see how long it takes if room is still faster, a lot faster than read underscore TSV. So things are taking longer now to process because uh, we were adding this mutate statement, right? And so before what we had way back up here, where was it? So we went like 30, 15, six. So basically we're cutting things in half with each of these three functions. And so what we find though, is that adding on the, um, the mutate with the str replace all regex, um, that what we're really doing is um, we can still see signs of cutting that in half by um, uh, using these three different read functions, but uh, this mutate is taking a lot longer than the read, right? And so basically when we add on the mutate, the difference in speed between read underscore TSV and Vroom are not so pronounced. One thing I'm thinking about um, is that what we're doing in this regex is we're removing a final semicolon from our taxonomy string. And so this is doing str replace all. Um, I think there's another, so maybe last. I think that's a thing. Uh, let's go ahead and see if that's a thing. Uh, I know there is a first, so there is a last, right? So there's a first, there's a last, there's an all. So let's go ahead and do the last. And I don't know that that's gonna change anything at all, but. It's got me curious, and so let's see. Yeah, so that didn't really change the performance at all. Um, and so we're seeing, again, that Vroom is faster than read underscore TSV, um, but not by a whole lot. I'm a little reluctant to go to Vroom because um, that would add another package dependency. We're already using read R as a package dependency, and so I'd rather not have two packages for reading in things, but hey, um, if it made a huge difference in speed, or if this was really a bottleneck in the overall pipeline, then I would think about going to Vroom or something else, but eh, I'm not sold. Anyway, you might, you might make a dif different decision, but I just tell you my decision. So the fourth approach I want to try is data.table. So data.table has a great function called fread. I've used fread a lot when I have really wide data frames with, say, like thousands of columns. fread just reads it in like it's nothing. Whereas like read underscore TSV might take a couple minutes, right? So let's give that a shot and see what happens here. I'm not expecting a whole lot um, because again, we're already pretty fast here. So again, we'll do data.table f read, and then we'll give that taxonomy. And then um, we wanna give it a sep argument. So that's what it uses instead of delim uh, is backslash t. So one of the challenges in using package developed by different developers is that they call the same thing by different names. And that can sometimes be 
a bit frustrating. <laughs> so let's go ahead and look at this. And so what we find is our typical output. And so what we're finding is that it's again using uh, the first row of the table as the column names. So let's go ahead and do something different. And so I'm going to go ahead and do data.table fread to get a better sense of the different arguments. And so let's see. Um, looking for something like call names, so call dot names, right? So let's go ahead and grab this and I'll plop that in there and change that underscore into a period. Um, and let's go ahead and run those lines. And so now let's see um, taxonomy as the first a second column name and then accession as the first column name but again we are missing that aj accession which makes me think that we probably need to do something with the header and so it's saying header equals auto so i'm going to go ahead and do like header equals false and let's go ahead and rerun that all right so we'll scroll back up here and now we've got our aj accession back and that we've got our 24,642 rows which I guess if I would have looked back at this earlier, I could have seen that we only had 24,641 rows, right? So again, these, these different functions from different packages name things differently and they deal with things differently. All right, so let's go ahead then to this, go ahead and add our uh, dplyr mutate to remove that final semicolon and let's run our benchmarking. So we find that I totally botched the name of that, but this is data table. Um, maybe I'll come back here and I'll call this d.t. Uh, let's run that again to make sure things look nice in the output. So what we find is that data.table is faster still than Vroom. Um, I don't know, um, you know, this is maybe about 15% faster than read underscore TSV. Um, it would mean adding another package dependency, data.table. Um, we're talking about seven milliseconds here, right? Eh, who cares, right? And even if the, the taxonomy file were 10 times bigger, um, then we're talking about 70 milliseconds. We're not gonna notice that, right? And I think the more dependencies we add, we try to get, we kind of get into a state where we're just putting more expectations on uh, the package management software, on the user to make sure everything's installed. So I'm going to I'm going to skip data.table for now and I'm going to hold off on Vroom as well. Of course, I'm thinking about this in terms of building out a package and in terms of things where things are already really fast. And so going from 47 to 40 milliseconds eh, isn't that big of a deal. And actually, you know, again, we saw that most of the time spent here isn't in the read, it's actually in uh, the mutate, right? So I think what we'll do is we'll roll with read underscore TSV, but it's certainly nice to know, at least for like this type of application, kind of the hierarchy of speeds or the rankings of speeds of these different functions, okay? So like I said, I'm gonna roll with this read underscore TSV function from the read R package, mainly because I already have read R in my project, in my package. Um, you'll recall in the last episode, I did compare Vroom lines from Vroom to read uh, lines from read R and on the benchmarking like this, at least for some test data. So I found that Vroom lines and uh, read lines performed fairly similarly, but when I put it into the overall package and the overall vignette, um, that really the, the read lines performed faster. So again, we're not talking about big differences in time. So I'm inclined to kind of roll with read R and be happy with that. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and save this into my benchmarking directory. And I'll call this benchmarking uh, read TSV. And so that will be there, it'll be committed. If you wanna grab this code, you can look at this um, up on GitHub. I'm gonna go ahead then and grab this and we'll make sure that that's what we have here. Um, I think the one difference is this str replace all. Uh, so we'll go ahead and save that into our vignette. So now what we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and make a function for read underscore taxonomy. And so I will then do use underscore R, read underscore taxonomy. This opens up a read taxonomy.r script. I'm also gonna use a use test on that. And this will also open up a test file for read underscore taxonomy. And uh, this gives us a basic um, test file to make sure that two times two equals four. Again, if I test it 
everything should pass and we're in good shape. And we see now that, oh, that there's a new context, read underscore taxonomy. So let's think about this. Reading in taxonomy data works. And so uh, we've seen this in our read fast day test. And so I'm gonna go back and grab that where we needed to generate a temporary file that we could use for our tests. And so if I go in here to read uh, fast day, um, I've got this big setup here, right? And so I'm gonna go ahead and copy these lines over into my test read taxonomy. And uh, maybe I'll go ahead and grab the um, expected and expect equal. Again, it's gonna be different values because we're not reading in fast day data anymore, we're reading in taxonomy data, but it gives us a framework for thinking about things, right? All right, so we're gonna have a temp file and then we're going to write um, in the first column, seek A, and then let's go ahead and put a tab. And I'm gonna not put in real taxonomic names, but um, I'll, I'll go ahead and put in just kind of some simple lines to test a variety of things. So I'll do A colon B colon C colon, and maybe I'll go ahead and get rid of these for now. And I'll put in some others. So we'll do like B, C, D, and um, maybe I'll put some spaces in these to make sure that they behave right. Um, and maybe I'll go ahead and copy these down and I'll do the same thing, but for like D, E, F, and I'll remove the semicolon at the end uh, to see if, if that throws any problems, right? And so what we expect to see then um, when we um, send this temp into read taxonomy, so we'll call this taxonomy df, right? And so the expected data then is gonna be a data frame. Um, and so this then we will have our accession and we'll also have our taxonomy, right? And actually what I just saw um, when I was doing this is that we have two columns, right? We have ID and we have sequence. And so I think what would be nice instead of accession and taxonomy would be to have ID and taxonomy. And so then our D ID, um, if I look at this, will be a vector and we'll have seek A, uh, seek B, and I'll fill these out for all six, all right? And then our taxonomy is going to be the same taxonomy for all three. It's gonna be A semicolon B semicolon C with no semicolon at the end. I'm thinking that maybe we should add another test where we have a space in the sequence name. So we'll do seek G. And so then this will have also a space uh, in that. So this will be seek space G. And then we need to go ahead and yeah, that'll work. And I'll go ahead and make this kind of like what we had for seek A. All right, so now we're gonna expect taxonomy DF to equal expected. So we'll go ahead and save and test. This should fail. It fails because it couldn't find the function read underscore taxonomy. So we'll come back here now and we'll do read underscore taxonomy and we'll then do file uh, as the, or the argument. I wanna make sure that that's what I actually used in my fast day because I don't wanna have different arguments for read fast day and read taxonomy because that'd be confusing. So if I do use our read underscore fast day, I had file, good. So we'll use file, good. I'm happy with that. And then we'll come back to our vignette and I will go ahead and grab this stuff and plop that in there and good. So now, um, one thing I remember is I changed accession to ID. So let's do that. I'll go ahead and save and test. So that failed, why did it fail? Um, oh, because I don't know how to write a function. Ah, this should be read underscore taxonomy function file, right? So let's go ahead and save that and test. So it's saying object taxonomy not found. Um, and I think the problem is right here, right? So I gave it taxonomy as the file to read rather than file. So we'll go ahead and paste that in. Again, copying and pasting is great, except when it backfires on you. So we'll go ahead and test this again and hopefully it'll pass. No, it still doesn't pass. All right, um, can't find function calls. Ah, and so calls is brought in, I think with read R. So if we do calls, um, 
Yeah, so this is going to be in the read R package. So I need to do here uh, read R calls, and I'm probably probably also going to need it here on call character. Let's let's test that, right? I think it's going to fail again. So let's see. Yep, it does. So we'll go ahead and add read R to that. Now let's see if it passes. It failed. <laughs> Why did you fail? Um, so the actual taxonomy versus the expected taxonomy. Um, it's only giving us um, one thing out. And I think, again, this comes back to our test. And then I'm basically, I think, recreating the file with each of these write statements on lines 5 through 11. And I recall that I had to add append equals true for those subsequent lines. All right. So sometimes the errors are in the code we write, and sometimes it's in the test code we write. Hopefully this passes now. All right. So this did fail. <laughs> ah, I have all these blind spots and what I expect to happen. And so I think maybe this is a test I shouldn't have done um, because hopefully the data comes in without these extra spaces. But you know what? I think it's safe to go ahead and remove those spaces around the semicolons. And so I think what we can do is back here then and read taxonomy is to go ahead and add another line to our mutate here um, where we could then go ahead and do taxonomy equals string i str replace all regex on the taxonomy column and we're going to go ahead and look for any spaces after a semicolon and replace that with a semicolon so let's go ahead and see if that works now uh, and we're gaining on it don't worry, you'll get it. <laughs> and so here, the, the problem is that the output from what we generated in read taxonomy is a tibble rather than as a data frame. And so we could go ahead then and pipe this to as.data.frame, save, test. Finally, it passed. Wonderful. So I've got things pretty well the way I want them. One thing that I've noticed is I've added a dependency here to a deplier. Um, I prefer not to add a dependency to deplier if, again, this is the only place where I'm using something from deplier. Uh, we could very easily do this with base R with really no problem. So what I'm going to do is test that. And so we'll go ahead back to vignette.r and let's do read underscore taxonomy on our taxonomy uh, file. And we can go ahead and remove all this stuff. And if I go ahead and load my package and then um, go ahead and run this, Let's look at genera and make sure it looks the way we'd expect. Um, it is coming out as a data frame. And if I take uh, dim on genera, um, I do get those 24,642 rows. That's wonderful. And then if I do that join, um, it's complaining because I have ID equals ID. Uh, so here I could go ahead and give that just ID. Um, and then our seek table, um, is everything joined the way we would like it to be. Cool. Uh, you'll notice here, um, I turned the data frame, the FASTA data frame into a tibble to join those together. Um, don't know why I did that. So maybe we could go ahead and remove that. But again, this isn't really something I'm worried about for this episode. Anyway, this works, right? So what I'd like to do is let's do a micro benchmark on this. Um, and let's get the, the average time it takes to run this function. And so what we find is that the median time to run it is about 78 milli micros milliseconds, right? So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And so this is with dplyr. Uh, so let's go ahead back to read taxonomy and let's see if we can't remove that dplyr dependency. And so I'll go ahead and call this taxonomy on that. Um, and we'll remove this pipe. Then we'll go ahead and take um, this and remove the mutate because then our taxonomy dollar sign taxonomy is going to equal this, but we need to give it taxonomy dollar sign taxonomy, if that makes sense. And we'll go ahead and remove this comma and remove this pipe. Um, I don't know that we're going to need that as data frame. And then we'll do the same type of thing here. Uh, we can replace these equal signs with assignment arrows. All right, and then uh, here we need the same type of thing, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and save and test. I'm kind of worried that this might 
throw a problem. So let's see. And it's complaining about an extra parentheses here. So I'll go ahead and save and test. Ah, and so I didn't return the right thing. Um, I basically, again, functions will return the last thing that's executed. And in this case, it's a vector. And so now what we need to do is like return uh, taxonomy. And so let's test that. Again, we're getting that same problem. So I think what we can do is replace this return um, taxonomy with as.dataframe on taxonomy, save and test, and this should pass now. Cool. Go ahead and save and load that and come back to our vignette. And now let's rerun this micro benchmark and see if it's faster than 78 milliseconds. And it's 76.6 .6 milliseconds. So it's really not different in the amount of time it takes to execute. And we don't have to worry about that dplyr dependency, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that. I'll go ahead and remove my benchmarking. So we'll come back to our read taxonomy and we need to add in the documentation for this. So in code, it should be insert Roxygen skeleton. And we'll then uh, add this to say, read in taxonomy files. All right, so we'll have to add a lot more uh, information into this documentation along the way. Um, but we also want to then add our import statement, right? So we'll do import uh, from, and we'll then say the package is string i, and the functions then are uh, str replace last um, all, and then we'll also want to do import from um, read r, and we'll give that the read tsv, and we'll do calls, uh, not the, we don't need the comma, we'll do call character. So that should be good. So we'll go ahead and load that. We'll go ahead and then do document to get the documentation, the, the header information here for read taxonomy loaded, as well as the namespace updated. And so we get warning messages here um, about not having uh, the skeleton, the Roxygen skeleton filled out for read fast day and read taxonomy. I'm not gonna worry about that right now. Um, let's look at the namespace. And this again is generated from um, those import from statements in the Roxygen code, right? And so we see that um, we have our str replace all regex, last regex, right? So that's good. And then our read r, uh, we have our call, call characters, read tsv, that all looks good. Cool. All right. So I think we're in a good spot here to quit now. Um, I think the next step would be to go ahead and join those two together to then build out our Kamer database um, to make sure that we're there in the same order. We'll save that for the next episode, and maybe we'll start thinking about some of the documentation in that Roxygen header for our different functions. So that you don't miss all that exciting stuff in the next episode, please make sure that you subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time for another episode of Code Club.